Right, Dan, tell us about what's happening in this caravan. Yeah, all right. So this van has actually um, come to us for a couple of things. Um, we're going to replace the air conditioner and we're going to put a caravan in. Uh, during drop-off, the owner of the van just mm. asked if, during the process of doing the works, if I could have a bit of a look at the installation that's been done on his off-grid system. He was potentially thinking about maybe a couple more solar panels as well. Um, during the conversation, we lifted the table up, had a bit of a look at what was going on, um, and uh, straight away I saw a couple of installation issues. So one of the things that the owner was saying is that they couldn't run their coffee machine, this Breville um, coffee machine, from their inverter. So I said, okay, leave it with me. We'll, we'll have a little bit of a look at it, do some testing and, and see what we can come up with. Um, so first of all, when we first started looking at the, um, <laughs> the overall installation, it actually looks quite neat. Um, so the installation's been done by um, an auto sparky, just a, just a, a, just a general auto sparky um, and the inverter wiring has been done by just a general electrician so two different people the 12 volt installation I saw straight away that there were a few installation issues with the inverter um, but it's a two and a half thousand watt inverter from from all spark and um, you know it's a reasonable quality piece of kit so I wasn't expecting there to be an issue with that inverter, but I said I would test to make sure that it could pull the load. So it, it did, it did pull the load. But what I noticed straight away is when I turned the inverter on, um, there was current being drawn from the inverter with, in theory, nothing else on in the van. So I'll just quickly turn the inverter on and we'll have a little chat about what's actually happening here. This is called the infinite loop that sometimes gets discussed with um, caravans that have um, an inverter installed from either factory or sometimes by just a general Sparky that doesn't actually do off-grid systems. So at the moment, the inverter is on. We are off-grid in theory. We're in our, in our workshop. Um, and if you look closely down here, we're not plugged into mains, and you can see that the 240 volt charger is on. So, basically what's happening is the inverter is pulling from the batteries, converting power to supply power to the, to the battery charger to then put charge back into the batteries. Um, that's like an infinite loop that it's not infinite because everything uses a little bit of energy to convert from DC to AC and back to DC again. Um, so we're gonna lose power over time. You can actually see down here, I've got my clamp on, got my clamp on the cables and it's pull, pulling 38 amps from the battery at the moment. So that's on the inverter negative. Um, and then if we go back over here to the to the supply cable, you can actually see that it's only putting seven amps back in. So, um, so that would be why some of this battery would be running flat off grid for no apparent reason. Potentially, yep. Yeah. And it could also be the reason why that coffee machine was causing well, that coffee machine in theory was causing that inverter to overload because there's already a substantial load on the system mm. plus the coffee machine which I think is about 2000 watts. Right. So adding the battery charger and the coffee machine mm. together overloads the inverter. So that straight away is usually caused by people in doing installations that actually don't have a full scope understanding of what's going on in the system. As I said at the beginning, Auto Sparky did the DC. Standard 240 volt Sparky did the AC. Um, and hasn't actually put a 
separate power point in down here for the battery charger that's mains fed only. So that's the first thing. Um, with the DC installation, we've got a couple of installation issues here. Um, the cabling to the inverter is one size. So if you, if you have a look here, we've got probably what I would call 70 square mil or what AutoSpark is called double zero cable, battery cable. Um, going to the inverter, but you can clearly see here on either side that the paralleling cables between the two batteries are a different size than the outgoing load. And on top of that, we've got loads being taken off one battery only, rather than having a disbursement across the two batteries, uh, which will allow the batteries to um, uh, discharge evenly and charge evenly. So at the moment, um, there's a potential one will discharge faster than the other and then once the load comes off it'll push charge back into the other and that's not ideal from a from a BMS perspective, uh, battery balancing perspective as well. So as I say there's there's a, a couple of issues here that uh, are very fixable but relatively annoying for the owner because they've spent money already on getting the installation done um, so uh, I guess summarizing everything um, it is more ideal to go to an off-grid specialist that actually understands your holistic system um, rather than taking it to your local auto sparky potentially and your local sparky to do this or taking it to a theoretical off-grid specialist that might only be an auto sparky or sometimes not even an auto sparky sometimes they're only parts accessory fitters um, and then having that person get a 240 volt sparky involved at the same time so so this looks like to me a classic example of good kit yep neat but yep. A, a neat is all good and well but yep. apart from that it's good kit with a system that has been installed by people that have clueless. Yeah, basically. So the other thing that I've done just now as well is I've connected up to the Victron system um, and reprogrammed, first of all, the solar regulator that's in the overhead cupboard, which I wouldn't recommend to be the place um, to be installed. Um, it's too far away from the battery. Um, but reprogrammed that for lithium, first of all, because it wasn't programmed for lithium, it was programmed for AGM. Um, and I've also reprogrammed the smart shunt um, to uh, have the correct settings in for these particular batteries. Um, and I've also, at the same time, created a VE network which allows the solar regulator and the smart shunt to communicate with one each with one another, so that they can share information. So it negates a little bit of the issue of the solar regulator being in the overhead cupboard and the batteries being under the seat. So what we're going to do from here is um, we're going to do our, our, our work that we've been engaged to do, replace this air conditioner. We're actually replacing this with a, um, a Dometic Harrier Pro. We're going to install a carafan up front. Um, I'm going to install two more solar panels. So there's four panels up there which will be 180 to 200 watts each. So let's just say they're 180 watts. So he's got 720 on the roof already, going through the 50 amp MPPT, which is good. That's a good ratio. Um, I'm gonna put another MPPT down here with uh, two new solar panels up. So he potentially will have upwards of a thousand watts of solar up there. Um, Recable all the DC down here so that it's the correct size cabling for that particular inverter plus balance out those batteries. I will also do a 240 volt modification so that we can bring a, a feed down um, to a new power point down here which will have the battery charger plugged in so that the battery charger will only come on when he's plugged into mains. Uh, and that'll pretty much rectify all of his issues that he's got in this van so anyway hit us up with any questions on this one guys because we do actually see this quite a bit um and it just comes down to you know people not really understanding 
what they're doing or maybe just a little bit of laziness in the in the installation so hit us up with any questions we're always happy to answer them cheers <laughs>